How do you get 10,000 listeners to your podcast? It's a question that John Herzog asked in the podcast movement community, and it's something that I wanted to pick up and just talk a little bit about. The thing is, getting 10,000 listeners for your podcast is only going to be relevant, it's only going to be important, it's only going to work out well for you if you know what you want to do with those listeners. So that's an extremely important consideration before we even talk about how to get the listeners. Let's think about ultimately what most podcasters want, which is to monetize their podcast. So 10,000 listeners is a fantastic figure and it puts you firmly in the top percentile of average podcasters. You will certainly certainly be one of the biggest podcasts around with 10,000 listeners. What that really means is that you have 10,000 people that download every single episode. So this is not 10,000 listeners per month. This is not 10,000 listeners per quarter or per year. It's 10,000 downloads per month episode. So that's the real number. That's the first thing. The second thing is, what are we going to do when we have those people? Are we going to monetize? Well, yeah, we want to be able to monetize, but how are we going to monetize? Because, you know, you might only get 10, 15, 20, 25 bucks CPM. That's cost per meal, which is essentially the amount that you will get paid per 1,000 listeners. You might only earn 250 bucks per episode, which is a lot of money as an independent hobbyist podcaster. Don't get me wrong, that is fantastic fantastic money, but it doesn't sound much compared to 10,000 listeners. That's just a couple of things that I want you to bear in mind, all right? So let's get to the how. How do you get 10,000 listeners for your podcast? I think that you can really start to get upwards of four, five hundred listeners, four, five hundred downloads per episode using the launch strategies that we talk about here at Captivate and Rebel Base Media, which are doing things like your acknowledgement episodes, your bonus episodes that thank everyone that's been involved in the podcast, that building a little bit of virality and also just exhausting your friends and family and the people that you already know in your peer groups and friend groups, because ultimately, whatever you're talking about, you will have some common ground with people, a percentage of them like what you do. So if you've already got a career in something, if you've already got a career in IT or a career in marketing or in building or whatever you happen to be podcasting about, that peer group, that network that you've built over the last few years will probably get you to three for maybe 500 listeners per episode. That's a lofty task. It's not easy and you do need to nurture them. You need to put the work in. You need to build up marketing methods to help to understand how to get that content into people. You can do that just using people that you've already got access to. But then how do we get the other 9,500? Well, look, this is where it gets tough. This is where actual marketing comes into play. Now, I believe that most podcasters simply don't know enough about marketing and that's all right. You know, we have podcastsuccessacademy.com that teaches podcast marketing. The reason that we do that is because you don't start a podcast to become a marketer. No one wants to start a podcast to become a marketer. That's crazy. Who wants to do that? What happens is that you get to these four or 500 downloads, these four or 500 listeners, and you don't know what to do next. And that's when you have to start to learn. In an ideal world, you know, you'd act as a normal business, which is that you'd have a little bit of revenue that you could reinvest in working with a marketing partner. But as a hobbyist podcaster with four or 500 downloads, you probably won't have that revenue to invest in a marketing person. So you have to learn what to do to get quick wins. And here's the scenario, okay? There's something that I call this podcast discoverability triangle, okay? So I'm going to talk to you now very quickly about a strategy to get you to 10,000 downloads. Then I'm going to talk to you about one tactic that I would use to kickstart that. It's not the only tactic, but it's the one tactic that I would use to kickstart it. So very quickly, the podcast discoverability triangle comprises three types of people that I believe you should be targeting with your marketing. The first type of people are people that love what you talk about. So maybe you talk about Star Wars and there are people that love Star Wars, but they don't have a clue about what a podcast is. If you can create marketing that targets them, you will open up new listeners. Maybe they don't know what a podcast is and you just need to help them along with, hey, you just go to this place, click this button and you can listen to Star Wars content to your heart's content. That's phase number one of the discoverability triangle. They're the people that we need to market to. The second part of the discoverability triangle is accessing people who already know about podcasts, but that don't know about your podcast. So they already know about the tech, they know how to listen, they know all of that stuff that gets a podcast into their ears, but they don't know about you. So I'm talking here about promo swapping and collaborating with other podcasts 
other podcasters in your niche or related niches, opening up a market of people that know about podcasting, but that don't know about you. So that's the second facet of the podcast discoverability triangle. The third part is making content and giving mechanisms out that make it easy to share and want to share the content that you publish. If you kind of bland content, you kind of grey content that doesn't really stand out, it doesn't it doesn't stand by an opinion, doesn't generate any emotion, doesn't make people laugh, it doesn't educate them, then you're not going to get anyone sharing it because there's no reason to share it. It's pointless. No one wants to share things that don't matter to them. So you have to create content that matters enough that people want to share it. And that's the third facet of the discoverability triangle. So that's the first thing that I would do is I would devise a strategy on how to access those three types of people. And then the tactic that I would use to start marketing in my podcast today is very simple, very simple Facebook advertising. I would devise a marketing funnel, and we talk about this in the Podcast Success Academy, a marketing funnel wherein you publish adverts on Facebook. Let's use Facebook because it is a great example. Push Facebook ads to your landing page which has a trailer on there and using that trailer, use that to retarget. So you have the Facebook pixel on your website. Use that to retarget people with extra content from your podcast. Now, don't have the time here right now to go deep into those tactics, but we do run a live deep dive Q&A on this sort of thing for Captivate podcast websites and any rebel-based media podcaster. So if you are a Captivate.fm user or you use podcast websites, which is our managed WordPress platform, you will get access to a deep dive Q&A where we can go into more of this. Just remember, podcast marketing and how to get to 10,000 listeners is all about connecting with people who have yet to discover your content. Social media marketing and blasting a tweet out isn't going to do that. You need strategy and more tactical and thoughtful implementation. But you can do this. Let me know what I can do. If you need me, hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Asquith or let me know in the YouTube comments as well. I'm always very, very happy to help. But we can get you to 10,000 downloads per episode. You've got everything you need to do that. Let's get started.